Welcome to the 28 Storms Afternoon Update on this Thursday, July 21st. In the Atlantic, we still have tropical storms Brett and Cindy, but they're really far up there and not really affecting any land masses. And we also have this much talked about tropical wave here at 28 Storms. We've been talking about this for the last two or three days, and now it's got a 10% chance of development from the National Hurricane Center outlook over the next 48 hours. And of course, we now have major Hurricane Dora. It's almost a Category 5. We're going to take a look at all of these features and a look at some of the model guidance. If we take a regional view of the Atlantic Basin, we see that the Gulf and Caribbean are extremely quiet with hardly any shower activity. To the northwest of Bermuda, we still see that Tropical Storm Brett is hanging on, but the low-level circulation is highly exposed and moving away. And Tropical Storm Cindy is so far to the northeast that it's really not even in this picture. But look down here, we now have this tropical wave. None of the models are that enthused about it, but it has become a little bit better organized compared to yesterday. We're seeing a little bit better concentration of the convection, and that broad L-defined low-level circulation is still present. And on water vapor imagery, you can see that the upper-level winds aren't too terribly unfavorable. So we're going to closely look at the model guidance, but we're still going to pour through these systems really quick. Tropical Storm Brett is more than likely within about 24 hours of dissipation. We see that the low-level center is exposed to the north of the highest convection in cloud tops due to some northerly wind shear. It's well off the coast of the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and it's going to stay that way. And also, this dry air is working its way into the system, and that's also going to help dissipate it. Both the model consensus and the official forecast track take this out to sea, and sooner or later, it's going to become extratropical, so this is no threat. Moving on to Tropical Storm Cindy, we still see that Cindy is fairly well defined. Convection is still near the low level center, but if we look off toward the northwest, we have an approaching non-tropical trough, and that's going to absorb the storm more than likely within the next 24 hours. So both of our northern Atlantic tropical cyclones will more than likely dissipate within the next day or so. Either way, some of the moisture embedded within Tropical Storm Cindy may still end up making it to the western half of Europe, and here's the latest forecast track ta taking it safely out to sea. If we look off into the eastern Pacific, we'll find a simply amazing major hurricane. Maximum sustained winds of Hurricane Dora are 155 miles per hour, making this just one mile per hour shy of being classified as a Category 5 on the Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale. As you can see, this has a very well-defined eye. It's almost a perfect hurricane, although I don't think it's going to quite make it to Category 5 status. If you look at the latest infrared over the last three hours, we do begin to see that the convective ring surrounding the eye has begun to diminish in, in intensity just a little bit. And of course, it still looks very good on, and healthy on satellite imagery, but for it to become a true Category 5, things have to look almost perfect. And if we look off on the latest water vapor imagery, we can see that the vertical wind shear profile around the storm is still very favorable. The only thing that's going to really damper this system is the cooler sea surface temperatures that it will be moving into fairly soon. And not only that, but it's typically very difficult for major hurricanes to maintain this type of intensity for an extended period of time. There are one or two models that do attempt to make DORA a Category 5 within the next 6 to 12 hours. But again, I really don't see that happening based on the latest satellite. And obviously after that, it's going to quickly diminish in intensity as it moves into a more unfavorable environment. What makes Dora even better is the fact that we can safely observe the true power of Mother Nature as this storm quickly moves out to sea and is really no threat or at least a direct threat to any land masses. If anything, the Baja Peninsula may receive some extremely high waves along with some outer bands of the storm, but by far the direct inner core will remain well to the south and west of the Baja and that's also being supported by the official forecast track. As you can see, even the cone of error is just, just off toward your west. One last thing I'd like to show you regarding Hurricane Dora is a animation of the most recent microwave satellite frames. And this just goes to show you the true power of this major hurricane. You can see that that eye wall is easily present. You can easily make everything out. That eye wall becomes very intense when it begins to max out. The eye also begins to contract some, which is a good sign of intensification. And once again, thankfully, this is no threat to land. And the following images just goes to put things into better perspective. As you, we can see, Mexico has really dodged a bullet as this major hurricane continues to pass off toward your south and west. So as those three aforementioned tropical cyclones begin to exit the picture, the main focus will be once again on this tropical wave. Today it's now passing 50 degrees west longitude. It has become a little bit better organized, nothing to write home about, and we're still not expecting much over the next few days because we not only have 
some very light wind shear. In fact, the wind shear isn't even that high anymore. We've had an upper level ridge develop directly over the tropical wave, as I'll show you in just a moment. But more important than anything, we have some dry air still surrounding the tropical wave. And also, the wind shear is a bit more intense as we get closer to the Virgin Islands. So that may benefit in this system not developing before it reaches you. But still keep an eye out on this. We see on the 850 millibar vorticity that the tropical wave has detached itself a little bit better from the inner tropical convergence zone. And despite it doing so, we still see a little vorticity max here. Not overly intense at all, but it is an indication that this tropical wave is holding its own. And you can really make out the upper level ridge on the Sims wind shear analysis. The wind shear values have decreased below 5 knots directly over the tropical wave. But one saving grace for the Virgin Islands and Lesser Antilles is that this upper level trough is still expected to remain anchored over you for the short term period. And therefore this tropical wave will be encountering 20 to 30 knots of wind shear over the next three to four days. If we quickly review some of the latest model guidance, we'll notice that the 12Z Canadian CMC has really backed off on development in the Western Atlantic. As you can see, it does still take it all the way across, but by the time it begins to finalize the forecast near day six, it's near the Southern Florida Bahamas region, but you really can't even make out the vorticity max anymore. There's nothing else in the Atlantic or Eastern Pacific, but notice, do notice that there is a little bit more activity near the Cape Verde Islands by the end of the period. The 12Z GFS has never been that enthused about this tropical wave, and it continues to be rather pessimistic in terms of any development chances. But by the end of the period, much like the Canadian CMC model, we see that, if anything, there are some remnant traces of the vorticity max near the Bahamas. And also, it's beginning to pick up on a little bit more increased activity off the coast of Africa near day 6 and day 7, much like the CMC. The no gaps model is not that good, but it is the most aggressive model that develops this tropical wave today. As you can see, it takes it into the western Atlantic and begins to take this off toward the Carolina coast as a tropical depression or tropical storm. The 12Z UK Met is also very pessimistic. The tropical wave is located right here with a 1013 millibar associated surface area of low pressure by 24 hours, still not doing much. By day 2, it's now over the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Day 3, passing over Hispaniola. Day 4, passing over eastern Cuba. Day 5, beginning to move into southeast Florida, but only as an open wave axis. The European model was also developing this system much like the Canadian, but it has also since backed off. This is the current location of our tropical wave. Now this is day 1, day 2, day 3. It's now located over Haiti and eastern Cuba. Day 4, day 5, we can't really even begin to tell where it is, but it's located somewhere in the western Bahamas or southeast Florida. And I'll just go ahead and finish out the model run. It doesn't really show much out there. Until we get around to day 9 or day 10, it does have a very broad area of low pressure sitting here in the southwest Caribbean. But again, that's toward day 9 and day 10. Nothing imminent. So as of right now, none of the very reliable models are that enthused about this system becoming much of anything. But it will be interesting to follow the upper level shear pattern just ahead of this tropical wave. Of course, if conditions become a bit more favorable than expected, then this could always pull a surprise development. If we look at the latest 12Z GFS shear forecast, we see that it correctly depicts the upper level ridge located directly over the wave. There's the westerly wind shear off just to the west. But notice how the upper level ridge will follow the wave axis for at least a short term period into much of the eastern Caribbean. That's at least based on the latest thinking from the GFS forecast model. So I guess the biggest problem here is that once it begins to enter Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, the westerly winds still remain fairly abundant here across much of the southwest Atlantic, which could be much, uh, a pretty significant problem if you're hoping for any tropical development. But still, sporadically, off and on throughout the period, we get these little pockets of upper-level ridging. And if, if that tropical wave were to be in that location during that time, then that could be something to also watch out for. So we'll just keep a close watch on things, but nothing is imminent in the tropics today. So thanks again for visiting 28storms.com. Check back soon for more updates.